best thing about Halloween is November 1st because all of the candy is literally like 50% off. The only thing that's super scary on November 1st is going to be my blood sugar numbers because I literally am going to abuse this candy tonight and <sighs> that's never good but so much fun. <laughs> Gothamites, if you're new here, hi. <laughs> I'm London, aka History of the Batman. It is Halloween today. I am not Batgirl or Batman, but I am a shark. See? <laughs> See, I have little teeth and everything. I even have fins on my, my jacket. I literally am embodying a shark this Halloween. Is that what? Halloween in your like super super late 20s is just trying to be comfortable <laughs> and not like going out and being like slutty robin or something but being literally like a teddy bear that's anyway <laughs> because it is the spookiest time of year obviously I wanted to highlight just a couple of my personal favorite scariest Batman stories some are on Halloween some are just downright creepy tales that if you are like how do I celebrate Batman and Halloween and mix that all together this is the video for you and these are the stories that you need to check out. These in particular put up the spooky factor to about a 10 if we were at like a 2 with a regular old Batman running around the streets of Gotham. But let's just dive into some good old fashioned Halloween Batman stories but before we do why don't you subscribe to this channel and become part of this wonderful Gothamite community. It's fun here. We talk about Batman on the holidays and on the non-holidays literally every day. So if you like Batman, you should definitely subscribe and also follow me on my social media, especially Instagram, at History of the Batman because it is a good old time there. You know what? I wanted to also show that my jacket has a big back fin. Can you see the fin? <laughs> Literally that's been in the way of this chair back here. <laughs> you know the jacket itself is super cozy. These fins though fam, they're extra. Anyway. Our first story is from 1971. It is a Dennis O'Neill and Neil Adams classic and it is called Night of the Reaper and it was published in Batman issue 237. I'm sure, depending on how old you are, you remember your first adult Halloween party. There was drinking, there's dancing, and of course there is a person dressed up like Robin getting attacked by a huge grim reaper. No, not in your recollection that that happened. Well, for Dick Grayson, <laughs> that's exactly what his first college Halloween party was like. First of all, I just want to say, they went to Vermont for this party, which, love that. <laughs> but yes, Grayson, who is not dressed up as Robin because he is Robin, sees that someone else that admires his sidekick persona gets attacked by a large hooded figure who pretty much looks like the Grim Reaper and is calling himself the Reaper. Now, Dick Grayson changes out of his one costume and puts on his regular costume, goes to see Reaper, and then of course the Reaper almost like beats him down in a horrible way. And of course Batman, Bruce Wayne's Batman, who just so happens to be in the area of this Halloween party. Yes, he's in Vermont because he is hunting down an ex-Nazi war criminal, which Sure, right? Which I just think that's great because they are both in Vermont and all of this is happening. And I am sure someone online is going to show me a map of how Gotham is reminiscent to like New Jersey and New York and it's close to Vermont and it's plausible that they could be in Vermont for this party because the internet exists and I get it. But it's still funny that it's not in Gotham. <laughs> Once Batman saves Robin and he brings him back to the party, which what? Why would you go back to the party? <laughs> I'm like either going with you on this mission fam or I am going back to my dorm because why am I at this party when someone got attacked? 
I don't understand. <laughs> but while Grayson is back at this weird party, Batman is now on the hunt for not only the Reaper, but his Nazi war criminal. And of course he finds out that they are both linked together in a horrible, horrible history and he has to stop this Grim Reaper from committing any murders or attacking any other Robins. I've always liked Night of the Reaper. I always recommend it during Halloween time because it's not only a real solid Bronze Age story. It was in that sweet moment in the early 70s when Batman detective comic stories were getting so much darker. And it's one of the earliest Batman actual Halloween stories that I ever read and I think one of the earliest ones. So it's just something you gotta check out. It's very fun and like I said, why are we in Vermont? <laughs> but no, to be honest, there's actually a reason why they are in Vermont because this story is tied to other comics that happen around this time. It's like all a huge Halloween arc. <laughs> but this one is just in particular for Batman. So it's just funny because how red. <laughs> Our next story is called Mask, which is a highly underrated two-issue arc from 1992. This story, written and illustrated by Brian Talbot, is feeding into one of the most popular Batman conspiracy theories out there. Now, if you're new to this channel, I love conspiracy theories, and I've done about three videos <laughs> about different Batman fan theories that people have on the interwebs about the character and his mythology. And the first video I ever did, this theory was included. So I have our, oh, it went, well, of the text, sorry. <laughs> In the description, I put my conspiracy theories playlist. So if you wanna watch one or all three of those videos, they're all right there, cause it's very fun. <laughs> In this story, Bruce Wayne's Batman is on patrol in Gotham City and is seemingly knocked out. And when he wakes up and he is told by a doctor that he has an extreme case of dissociative disorder. And his Batman persona is just an extension of this disorder and is part of his whole psychosis. Of course, the other part of the conspiracy theory is that all of Batman's rogues are actually parts of Bruce Wayne's own imagination and he has materialized them into villains even though it's all part of his personality. It's fun! <laughs> but in Mask, Bruce starts to actually act a little insane because he kind of doesn't know what to believe. He starts actually having hallucinations of villains such as Joker and Catwoman. Basically, Bruce is losing his ish and he has to rationalize with himself what is real, what is fake, and who is doing all of this to him, really trying to make him believe that Batman is just all in his mind. I think Mask needs to be on the scary Batman stories because it's an overall very horrifying experience for Bruce. I think for anybody. And Talbot's art is very surreal in most of the scenarios that happen within the comic and it's just pretty fantastic. So for the art alone, do it, but for the story and to see Bruce go a little out there and try to figure out who he is. I swear, Bruce is always having some type of like existential crisis when it comes to dealing with being Batman and being Bruce and what that means and dual identities. It's just, it's just a lot. <laughs> I think that's what makes the stories really, really good. Now, this next one is Vampire Batman and literally I talk about it all the time. In my last video on this channel that talked about the uh, best Batman comics where reader discretion is advised, that one's on there because it is just a really bloody, gory, scary mess and that's why I just had to briefly mention it. I've done many videos on this. I think my Halloween video last year was just talking about this three issue Elseworlds that was written by Doug Menton, illustrated by Kelly Jones and Malcolm Jones III. It is one of my favorite stories of all time, I always say it, and basically yes, Batman has to be transformed into a vampire to fight Dracula and his vampire minions that have come to Gotham. He defeats Dracula, but then he has a bloodlust. Story from Red Rain to Bloodstorm to Crimson Mist, all talk about Batman's little descent into becoming a vampire demon. He starts killing his enemies. He even drains the blood of Joker himself after Joker kills Catwoman. And it's a whole really scary mess. That's why you gotta read it. I love it all year round, but 
that is probably the best Halloween scary bloody gory story that I can offer to you. Can never not talk enough about Vampire Batman. It's outstanding! The next one is Haunted Night which Ooh, baby is so good. Before Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale's 1997 epic saga Batman The Long Halloween, the duo actually pinned three stories within the Legends of the Dark Knight publication. There were three separate Halloween specials. The first is called Choices, which was published in 1993. It is a pretty good Batman scarecrow story. Basically, Batman is fighting scarecrow. Batman gets a really huge dose of Scarecrow's fear toxins. He wakes up and Scarecrow has placed him in a literal maze and Batman has to make good choices and try to escape the maze before Scarecrow can get his hands on him. Which is basically a good foundation for any Scarecrow story. He gives Batman the, the fear toxin. Batman thinks of like his dead parents and all the other horrible things that happens in his life all the time and he has to overcome his fears and his guilt and his trauma just to get out to go I don't know put Scarecrow in Arkham and then he just escapes again it's it's a failed system. <laughs> the second story is called Madness and it is from 1994 and this was a little dark. <laughs> Mad Hatter kidnaps Barbara Gordon and wants to make her the Alice in his Alice in Wonderland and of course it is up to Batman and Barbara's father, Commissioner James Gordon, to track down Mad Hatter before everything just gets really creepy and deadly. <laughs> Mad Hatter is just real creepy. Like, <laughs> And then the third story is 1995's Ghosts, which is probably my favorite within this three issue series. On Halloween night, Bruce Wayne actually has a Charles Dickens moment because he is visited by three separate figures that represent the past, the present, and the future. The past is Poison Ivy, who shows Bruce's childhood and the fact that Thomas Wayne, Bruce's dad, never really helped celebrate Halloween with him or go trick-or-treating or do all any of the fun things that you do when you're a kid on Halloween. So of course, even before Thomas and Martha got gunned down, Bruce's childhood was just tragic apparently because sad Batman is sad. The Joker represents the present and kind of just gives Batman the pros and cons of his vigilante lifestyle, which of course Bruce reflects on. It's like, yeah, I saved the city, but oh no, my real life is just not the best. <laughs> and then the future is represented in a hooded figure, kind of like the Reaper, Grim Reaper, whatever. And of course he shows Bruce Wayne's grave and that not many people will mourn him if he still stays on the same path that he is right now. And the story ends on Halloween night when Bruce is giving out candy to trick-or-treaters at Wayne Manor and he starts reflecting on his life and starting to realize he needs to appreciate things. Not just Halloween and the fun time that is, but also just the people and relationships in his life and try to bring more normality into it, which probably won't happen, but <laughs> it's nice that he's trying, right? I'm pretty sure that all three of these stories are collected in one trade paperback, which I actually, oh, I know what I'll do. <laughs> Just saw this right now. I have an Amazon shop. I know like promotions like whatever, but I do. And I am continually updating it and putting in items that I think you guys would really, really like. And one that I actually do have right now and I'm still populating is a Halloween items list. So I'm adding in all of the stories that I either talk in this video or I've highlighted on my social media and just really fun Batman scary things. So if you want to buy one of the stories that I'm talking about, by the time this video goes up, I will have it in my Amazon store and I'll have it in the description below. You can just click on it and boom, go and shop away. I recommend it. <laughs> I definitely recommend picking up the Legends of the Dark Knight Halloween special series. It's really, really good. Do I say that it's a better Halloween story than Batman the Long Halloween? In a way it is only because they're three separate tales. They kind of give singular focus. But then of course our next story, which I'm only going to mention briefly because you already know, you gotta read Batman the Long Halloween 
for Halloween! If you don't know, Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale's Batman the Long Halloween is a 13 issue arc that was from 1996 to 1997 and it follows Batman, Commissioner Gordon, and seemingly Harvey Dent trying to work together to stop crime in Gotham but then when the holiday killer strikes, who is a murderer that kills somebody on every holiday starting with Halloween and it ends with Halloween. The story isn't just a good, really, really good detective story. You got all the holidays. You like any holiday? This is the book for you. You like Christmas? Boom, we got a Christmas story. You like Valentine's Day? Boom, we got that. You like April Fool's Day? Boom, we got that too. It's just really fun. <laughs> and it is also a fantastic two-faced origin story or a Harvey Dent transforming into Two-Face origin story. One of the best out there. Bad Along Halloween, read it all year long, but if you got to at least try to read it on Halloween, or at least start it at least. <laughs> there are a couple of other series that I briefly want to mention. One is a 2008 12 issue series that was written by Sneed Niles and illustrated by Kelly Jones, my favorite. It is called Batman Gotham After Midnight. This story is an essential because not only is Batman trying to track down a new rogue in Gotham called Midnight, but it all revolves around Halloween. It's all, all Halloween. You gotta hit it before midnight. It is a perfect Halloween story and of course Kelly Jones's art is creepy and scary and it's a trip like this panel cover of Joker sitting on the pumpkins and everything is one of my favorite like images of Joker. I always love the very extensive scary, I don't even know what this is, art that Kelly Jones does but yeah that is definitely in the trade. I'll put that in the Amazon shop store, but it is a really good story. This last story is very, very new, like super new, like last month kind of new, and that is Tom Taylor's Deceased, which shows Batman and members of the Justice League and basically the DC universe enveloped in a zombie apocalypse of sorts. It's crazy, especially the variant covers. Oh my god. I mean, the, the regular covers are fantastic. I mean, look at this. Batman's dead, okay? <laughs> you love zombies and you love gore and blood and just darkness? This is for you, fam. Is deceased a good day to die? So if you're looking for that, I will put it in my Amazon store and yeah, go read it. It's literally out now. Go read it now. <laughs> and just a bonus, if you want to play something real scary, <laughs> Like a Batman video game and be scary. I always recommend the first Arkham Asylum. Like the, the first, the 2009 Arkham Asylum. Because when you have to go into that morgue and then you have to go fight Scarecrow and not get hit by the light, like that always trips me up and that's always scary. Like anytime you're walking through Arkham and then everything around you just turns into Crime Alley and there's rain and wind and then you see the bodies you're just like oh here we go again like what it's I think that's scary <laughs> no matter how many times I played it because it's my favorite but go do that too so whether you're reading one of these stories or several of these stories or you're just hanging out with your bat family and super friends, I really hope you all have a very fun and safe Halloween night tonight. I hope your Halloween is bat-tastic. Thank you guys so much for watching this video about the best Halloween Batman stories. If you enjoyed this video, please give a bat, a bat, a bat thumbs up. As always, all of my social media is linked in the description below, including Instagram at History of the Batman. So why don't you give it a follow and become a Gothamite? Check out my videos for DC Comics DC Fans channel, and of course, please subscribe to this channel so you can become part of this Batman community. It would mean so much to me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will have more History of the Batman soon, right here on YouTube. Oh, ah! it's funny. Love it! I love this hood. <laughs> Remember Gothamites, all about peace, love, and Batman. Happy Halloween! <laughs>